going through that process, process how, how did you end up like kind of take me through your career journey? Because I know you had some success in the corporate world, you know, prior as well. So so kind of take me from from high school. You're not working a job there, but, you know, go, going into the school and then going in, into your career and how you end up founding yourself eventually in this space. Certainly, certainly. So I went away to college. I went to Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York. So I'm a graduate from Stevenson High School in the Bronx. And when I graduated from Stevenson, I knew I wanted to study business, but I didn't know what um, discipline I wanted to focus on. And then when I got to Marist, my first semester, I took a, a marketing management course. So I really did well in that course. And it led me to feel like sales and marketing was my career path. So business, marketing, sales, that was my career path early on. But when I, senior year, I took an investment analysis course and that kind of opened my world to the capital markets. And upon graduating, I wanted to you know, go to work at, at Merrill Lynch. But before graduating, I had to start working because my junior year, I actually got married and my first son was born. So my wow. first son was born my junior year, my second son was born in my senior year. So I had wow. to go and go to school. And I had to decide whether I was going to stop school and just work or whether I was just going to finish school to you know, get my degree so I can increase my um, livelihood. I said, Let, I need to do both. Yeah. I can't not work because I had children and a wife to take care of, but I needed to accelerate getting out of school. So I finished graduated school on time. Wanted to go to Wall Street upon getting that investment analysis course in my senior year. And I went down to Wall Street, but they wouldn't let me be a financial advisor. They told me I didn't have sales experience. I said, well, I'm just coming out of college. I don't have sales experience, but I have an aspiration to be an advisor. So you need a sales experience. I said, all right, well, I worked in the back office for Merrill Lynch managing the average price account. So mm -hmm. I was doing a back office accounting work. That wasn't really my passion, but it was a means to an end. So then I went and got some sales experience, worked for Brinks, the armored car company for a number of years. Um, okay. Left there and went to Philip Morris. Didn't have a short, I only had a short stint at Philip Morris because selling tobacco wasn't really something I was passionate about. You said Brinks. Did you say Brinks? Brinks, the armor car company. I sold. What, what do you, so curry. what do you sell at Brinks? I'm just talking right now. So I sold air courier service. So any, um, Brinks would have your stocks, your bonds, your jewelry, precious right. metals, any valuables. Yep. Domestically as well as internationally. Yes. So I'll be selling the service to the banks and brokerage houses. And the ah, got you. Okay, okay. Yeah, to utilize Brink service. District dealers that any movement of valuables, they needed to move them. Through. I got you. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. All right, I'm I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, I was just like Brinks. Huh, are we selling the trucks? Are we doing? You know. Okay. So all right, now we we back. Okay, Philip Morris Tobacco. <laughs> yeah. And then, as unfortunately throughout my career. Um, in 1988, um, I became a widower because mm. my first wife passed away. She was diagnosed with cancer right after my first son was born. Excuse wow. me, my second son was born. When my son Jabari came home, his mom, my wife, Rhonda, said, fortunately, I'm diagnosed with cancer. So she lived seven, six years after that. So she passed in 88. So as I left, Brinks and went to Philip Morris in 89. Didn't um, really like, like I said, selling cigarettes. I ended up transitioning to a pharmaceutical business in 1991. So got an opportunity to work in a pharmaceutical company. And I spent a lot of years in a pharmaceutical company, about 15, 16 years in a pharmaceutical company. Wow. And additionally, I am one that wants to always give back to my community. And I had began volunteering my time in a professional sales networking organization called the National Sales Network in the mid 90s. And the ability then came along, this is 2006, and I got recruited to Merrill Lynch as a pharmaceutical Wow. Wow. Pharmaceutical business, 
You know, I was a business banker with Citibank at one point in time. Also worked for Black Enterprise Magazine um, in between some stints in the pharmaceutical business. Yeah, you worked with Earl Graves. You worked with him. I did. Yeah. And um, that was a great experience. No question about it. Worked for one of the legends in, in business. And um, when Merrill Lynch recruited me and I got on board there, it was in the height of the global financial crisis. So I was only there from 2006 to 2008. Mm. The thing about it, that's where I got my Series 7. I got my Series 7 and my 66 when I was at Merrill Lynch. Okay. So even though it was a short stint at Merrill, I was able to get licensed, and I still possess those licenses today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, and that, that's a test you never want to take again. Once you get there, <laughs> that, you never want that's to That's what take I that. hear. That's what I hear, you know? <laughs> no question. Absolutely. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, you, you, you had that goal, you know, even coming out of college and it took some time, but you still kept it as an aspiration and you accomplished it. But you know, Rod, I will tell you this. Um, the fact that when my wife was diagnosed and I became a caregiver early on, in hindsight, if I would have had that high pressure financial advisor job, then it might have been difficult for me to balance it then. So in hindsight, the timing that I did become a financial advisor, because it's not easy gathering assets and you know earning your keep as an yeah. entrepreneur in the financial service industry. It's a high pressure type of uh, environment. So in hindsight, it was probably better that I did other selling and, and develop skill sets early on in life throughout my career before taking on this type of role and responsibility. Hey, you know, I always say all things in, in divine order, you know, because, right. you know, you just never, you just never know why things are working in a certain way until you get to the other side. And then you're like, exactly. okay, now that that begins to make some sense, you know, okay. even if it's not making sense at, at the time that it's happening. So, you know, from um, from Merrill Lynch, you know, obviously, so so having the series, let me just make sure we're, we're clear for, for everyone who's listening as well. Um, when you started at Merrill Lynch, now you had to go through the process of life health followed by securities licensing or well, it actually was in reverse in reverse. OK, that's yeah, what I was going to say. Or I just seven first. OK, which is seven. Then I took the 66. Now, the 66 is a combination of the 63 and the 65. So a registered investment advisor. Now, in order to take the 66, you have to have the seven. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to have the seven first. Then the life and health, that comes afterwards. That was the easy one. Easier, yeah. That's a much easier test. That was the easy test for you. It was like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All tests are tests, but it was right. definitely easy, comparable to the other one. No, I... I <laughs> I know folks that take that series seven, man. I yeah. that's that's a real one right there. That's a that's that's like a like a bar exam, you know. That's that's a tough or medical exam. That's a, that's a tough one. No, definitely give you. I give you give you. Got to give you your flowers, you know, for that one. Got to got to give the props for that one, you know. So c coming into into the Merrill Lynch, you know, two thousand six, two thousand to two thousand eight, obviously. Boom! You know the the bottom drop. You know out of the entire country. What 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 happens next? So at that point, I said to myself, uh, "Well, do I go to uh, J.P. Morgan Chase? Do I go to Morgan Stanley? Do I go to Goldman? You know, Prudential. I know was looking to recruit me. A lot of companies were looking to recruit me, but at that particular time, the whole industry was just you know upside down. So. I didn't want to necessarily shift and just go to another company and yet not knowing whether or not I was going to succeed. All right. So I ended up, I started a health and wellness business. Mm. I started a health and wellness business. Again, my prior experience in the pharmaceutical business, I understood the importance of health. And that's what I started. But I didn't make enough money making money to do that platform. And then my youngest daughter was about to go to school. So my salary went away. <laughs> my expenses was about to go up. So I had to figure out, well, how I was going to make ends meet. I still had a mortgage. Yeah. 
All right. You live in New York or you live you're in Jersey. At that time, I lived in New Jersey. That's Still more than Virginia. All right. right. <laughs> so I transitioned from Merrill, the health and wellness business, didn't make enough money to make ends meet. So then I learned Medicare. Mm. So I became a captive um, employee with Health First. And then I had a stint with United Healthcare. So I learned the Medicare business. So I utilized my life and health insurance license to basically take care of my bills. At the wow. Time. But my passion was still the transition back into financial services. But what model, I didn't necessarily want to go work for a bank. And as you know, if you don't know, let me just tell you that working for one of the major wirehouses, your goals are tremendous, meaning they want you to bring millions and millions of dollars in access under management to earn your key. Gotcha. Only about 10 to 15 percent of financial advisors actually make it in the industry because of that. Yeah. If you have the capability of gathering those assets, you can earn a living. But if you don't, you end up getting pushed to the side and then they keep your book. So whatever asset you did bring, Whew. they're gonna keep it and say, well, you know, this is not working out. We'll see you later. Wow. And you got to start all over somewhere else. So I actually found a platform that allowed me to continue working in the Medicare space, right? And then start building my business and then give me the capability to replace my income and then walk away from a full-time position. So wow. that was a platform that was best suited to me. I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I, I, you know, you mentioned a few different pieces there and I think it's important to, to kind of highlight them because you've had several experiences, you know, in, in the business, you've been on the entrepreneurial side, you've been on the uh, more of a, you, you've been on the, I, I would say kind of a contractor style side, you know, when you're, you know, under like a, a Merrill Lynch, like that kind of umbrella you like an employee, but you're still kind of a contractor. So you kind of have all of those resources there. And then you've been an employee as well. I, I, I call I call it, you know, you know, independent, independent with major distribution and record deal. Right. It's like, you know, your, your independence, like, hey, it's all on me. You know, everything is all on me. You're independent with major distribution. You got resources and support, you know, to help you along. And then you got the record deal. OK, I'm a salaried employee. But in those instances, you still were leveraging the experiences, the skills, the licenses that you got, you know, inside of the industry as well. So I, I just I just wanted to highlight that because, you know, for anyone who's listening, they should know that there's so many different paths that you can take and still find stability, you know, and still be able to build. It's like, hey, you know, you're done doing the asset piece. OK, when the economy changed from an investment side, okay, now I can move over here into Medicare and that can kind of take care of the day-to-day. -day. Boom. Now I found a, a, a system, a process and an approach, you know, under, you know, an IMO channel that allows me to still work independently and boom, that, that is going to be the platform. So you got a lot of different, different areas. I just wanted to highlight that.